Also, Apple's 2023 Worldwide Developers Conference kicks off on Monday. Analysts and tech fans have high expectations for the event. Joining us now to give some key insights is a former Apple executive. He was the founding director of the Apple App Store and now advises developers who want to get their apps into the App Store. We've got Philip Schumacher, who is the Identity.com executive director. Philip, great to have you here with us today. First and foremost, when you think about the WWDC event and how critical it has become over the years, largely because of the role that you played in getting the Apple App Store uh, really kind of off to the races. Where does Apple need to continue to move forward with its relationship with those developers? What could they possibly announce to continue to invigorate excitement among that core base? Well, it seems like all the excitement right now, at least at Apple, is around this virtual reality, augmented reality headset. And that gives Apple yet another platform on which to sell apps, which helps drive business, right? That's the big thing this year. What's happening in the developer community? Are, are people, you know, given that they haven't actually introduced the product yet, do developers sort of pre-develop in anticipation of that kind of product, or do they have to wait till they have the actual specs? Many of us, you know, have to wait. Uh, there are uh, always a select anointed few that uh, developers that Apple uh, gives hardware to and allows them to start experimenting. But most of us have to sit on the sidelines and wait for the hardware to actually get released, which is typically at WWDC, and which is a super exciting time for developers in general on this platform because you have no idea what they're ultimately going to release because they have such a good secret engine inside. And Philip, we know that Meta did try and steal some of Apple's thunder by releasing its Quest 3. And you also, of course, have Sony's PSVR headset. But when you think of Apple and the ecosystem that this would be built into, talk about the competitive edge here. And most importantly, who is the ideal user for this? Yeah, so many of the headsets right now are cumbersome, they're large, they're difficult to use. And once you get in to start playing with them, they're not all that compelling, right? I, I play with all of those headsets that you mentioned, and I'm excited by seeing what Apple has because they're always going to do something that's a bit different, that's more customer focused, less developer focused, more customer focused to make it easier and something more uh, uh, complete for somebody to be able to use. So that's the real exciting thing is Apple released something that said code new worlds. And so developers are chomping at the bit to figure out exactly what that means. But first of, first and foremost, what Apple focuses on, other than the, the, the fit and finish of the device, is how to bring amazing new technologies to people in, an, in a way that people hadn't seen yet. And that's what's really exciting is the user experience that we're going to see from the Reality Pro headset, if that's what it's ultimately called. Phil, I've, I've played lightsaber DDR Max on these headsets before, and that was the best experience. I, I'm just trying to figure out why everybody's trying to push a headset on me why do why do we need the headset from the tech company's perspective right right i hear you and it's it's an interesting time because honestly metaverse and virtual reality is kind of passe right now right didn't we forget about it when when artificial intelligence uh, generative ai came around so i think some exciting things that that are going to be is is imagine these devices being used with uh, generative AI as well. And I think that's one of the things Apple is going to be doing this time is showing us that they've got to focus on AI. It's going to be embedded in the headset. And that's why you're going to want to wear those headsets is so you can have some real time feedback and real time interaction with an AI bot rather than doing it through command line typing on your machine. Well, that's a really good point, Philip, because um, when Apple reported its earnings, there were some questions about why it wasn't being more generative AI forward, if you will, like so many other companies have been. But what, what you're describing, I guess I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around it. Like how, what's the opportunity here for Apple? How is that going to work if I'm wearing the thing and interacting? What does it do for me, I guess is the question. Yeah, so virtual reality is going to be one of those things that embeds you in a different environment. Augmented reality is going to allow you to see your external world with things overlaid on top of it. So imagine if you were looking around the mountains around right outside your house and trying to figure out what's the name of each one. It will overlay the names of the mountains all around you. It will overlay the names of vehicles, things like that. And so for me, the AI, the generative AI is just going to have a real-time interactive feedback of what you're seeing, what you're hearing, and what you're doing, and be able to help guide you, if you will. That's, to me, the real interesting aspect of these future augmented reality devices. Help me deal better with, with my reality right now. 
And Philip, when you look at the price tag though, $3,000, I mean, already trying to afford a Quest is a bit of a stretch for people. When you have that price tag, I mean, I feel like there should be some expectations that come with this in terms of perhaps some of the hardware or other software that would really be built into to support this and make it something that people will use more widely. What do you think about this price tag here? Oh, the price tag is horrendous. It's it's going to be a tough pill to swallow, and they're probably not going to sell as many of those as they do iPhones every year. But it's a beginning, right? And especially if you have to wear a, a, a belt or something in your back pocket uh, for the battery pack, which is what we're hearing, uh, it's a rough, rough uh, set. You want virtual reality head, headset to be like glasses. You don't want there to be any more cumbersome than that. But look, we're about five years away from that. So I am worried about the price tag. That is way steep. That's three times the price of an iPhone. It's, it's, a, it's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, and probably the uh, telecom companies are not going to spring for it, at least not yet, like they do for your iPhone these days, uh, at least more so than they used to. Philip, thank you so much. Really helpful context here. Philip Shoemaker is Identity.com Executive Director and Founding Director of the Apple App Store. We'll see what we hear from Apple. Thank you.